All right, today we're going to chat about how to raise teens with good characters. Without a doubt, this is a very serious challenge for parents. Yeah, it's not easy. It's a daily thing. And we're going to start by just sharing a few jaw-dropping statistics. Get this, one out of every four high school seniors has had sexual intercourse with four or more people. That disgusts me. I'm just going to put yeah. that out there. That's, I think that's awful. I, think okay. it's I do think it's shocking. Yeah, I think that's horrible. Okay, about one in three have been offered, sold, or given an illegal drug on school grounds. And 13% confess that they have seriously considered suicide. So mm -hmm. today, two experts with tips on how to raise kids who make good decisions. We have mm -hmm. Barb Bartline. She's the people pro. She's also an author, nurse, psychotherapist, and a whole lot more. We don't have time to list <laughs> all that she does. And Jeff Wensler is the executive director and founder of Pivotal Directions. It is a character and leadership development program. Nice to have both of you yeah. here. Thanks Thank for you for so having much. Us. We put this question out on Facebook, and it's mm -hmm. the same question I'm going to start with with you guys, and that is, what's the number one thing parents can do to raise children or teens, which seems to be more challenging, with good character? So that's our Facebook question. You can weigh in on this. But but what would you guys say to that to that question? I, I think the. Uh, you have to really pay attention to your own personal values and how you convey those to your children. Uh, what I look for is teachable moments. Those times in everyday occurrences where there's an opportunity to teach your child something about the way the world works and, and what's a, a value-driven way to respond to that. Uh, I'll give you an example. My littlest one the other day told me, uh, I, I forgot to do an assignment for school and it's way overdue and I'm going to get in trouble. And I said, well, get busy and do it. She said, no, it's too much work. Mm. Teachable moment. Mm. I said, you know what? That's what successful people do. They do things that unsuccessful people don't want to do. Well, she liked that idea and decided she wanted to be a success, and she did the assignment. Mm -hmm. Look for those teachable moments. You know, it's interesting you say those teachable moments because, Jeff, it reminded me of something that Jim Higley, the bobblehead dad, said about teaching in the vanilla moments. And it's mm -hmm. those moments that aren't special or that aren't th right. those big moments as we're raising kids, but right. just the everyday kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and taking off from that, it's, for myself, it's stepping outside of the bubble. You know, I think sometimes it's the complacency of life. And, and, you know, there are those vanilla moments of everyday life, but then sometimes you can actually get caught into the rut as well. And I think sometimes that perspective is in those corners. It's in those little nooks, right? And inside of those nooks are outside of that little bubble. So let's say it's the, the suburban bubble. So you have to kind of jump out of that bubble, burst it a little bit, and you're going to see a slice of life that's a little bit different. I took my kids to uh, the Children's Outing Association. They had a great uh, literacy event and they had games for kids this weekend so we went down there and we were just my kids were mixing it up with kids that different skin color a different background and honestly they saw a different slice of life that was uh, a very teachable moment mm -hmm. and I think we need more of those yeah very important you know I, I remember going to soup kitchens and things like that well, those volunteer opportunities as well where you get to see all walks of life you know going through different periods of their journey in life and I think it's so important what do you think are some of the challenges, though? Because I've even sensed that I'm not a parent, you know, but at, even as an aunt with, with young nieces and nephews, I try and do a lot of those little moments where I say something, you know, that will kind of give them a little moral lesson. And they get a little annoyed with it at times, <laughs> kind of like, okay, I don't need a lesson right now, Tiff, you know, or whatever. How do you kind of push through that, those challenges as a parent or as an advisor to a, or a mentor to children to make sure that they're not just you know, brushing it off. Are they going to listen anyway? Because they face a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. I, I think they do listen. And sometimes they certainly act like they don't or that you're very annoying. I'm well familiar with that stance from <laughs> children that you're annoying. Um, but I do think things start to sink in. And they do listen. And you know what else? They watch you. Mm -hmm. They watch how you handle your life, how you respond to things. Do you live your life with integrity? Do you mm -hmm. live your life with honesty? And when you make a mistake, do you admit it and say, yes, I made a mistake? Mm -hmm. And kids want boundaries. Mm -hmm. They really do. I think the data shows that. For example, um, 
you, you look at a, a father and how he approaches his young daughter. And if a dad actually is setting boundaries of when the young girl is supposed to be at home and whether or not a young man can come and does he just have to beep to let the girl just run out of the house and That's jump in horrible. the car. Right. Mm -hmm. But so often that happens. And or are they home when, you know, are the lights on and are they home when the young man is dropping them off at the end of the night? But if all of a sudden dad cares and there are boundaries and curfews and those things are enforced and reinforced, then all of a sudden that young girl is going to say, well, those boundaries equate to value and there's value for myself. And if there's value for myself, then there's value for all things about myself. There's value for my body. And eventually there that's going to get passed on to the young man that's dropping her off and he's going to get the message. And then all of a sudden the, the young girl is going to start saying, you know what? This young man's not not you know, giving me value. So, you know, I'm going to actually go and look for the right guy who does treat me with value. So the message actually then, you know, rolls on. Yeah, and do you think kids want limits? What about technology? Mm -hmm. Is that a big challenge for teens in terms of having good, strong values? You know, I, I know that you take these. You, this thing, <laughs> technology is fantastic. I was just talking to a father yesterday about how this helps my business and so many other people's businesses, smartphones in great ways. These things have made life easier, but they also have given us a lot of complications with young people. Um, back in the day, let's say, let's take us back to when we were all teenagers. So let's say that I'm going to pass a note to Molly in class and we're going to talk about Tiffany. Mm -hmm. And maybe we're not going to say something so nice about Tiffany. <coughs> well, let's say we get caught about that with that note. I'm going to get sent to the principal's office and that note is going to get torn up and thrown into the garbage can. Well, that is as far as it went. Well, now all of a sudden today, a young person who has a hard enough time um, um, really um, thinking things through, they throw it right away spontaneously onto, in, you know, onto Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. Then it's out there in cyberspace. And it sort of lives forever. It forever. Away. And yep. now all of a sudden it tarnishes your reputation. And as a teenage girl, you're very self-conscious. And you know, maybe you're dealing with anxiety and depression. So we're dealing with a, a, a whole new world. Uh, mm -hmm. that technology can really uh, hurt, hurt us with. And from a healthcare professional standpoint, you see how it plays out with anxiety and depression with young girls, I'm sure. Yeah, it, it, it's such a different playing field. And you're right, it's so different than years ago just passing a note. Now it's out there, people are um, uh, humiliated, they may be shamed. Uh, it can really affect people. Mm -hmm. The statistics that we said earlier, because we're almost out of time, um, I just think we're staggering and people were probably really shocked. I mean, what do you think in general, these statistics, what's the number one thing we can do? What's our take home for every parent? Is it that you have to sit down and have conversations? Is it that you need to take time outs? Is that you need to have dinner together? Is there a solution? Well, I, I love your comment, Tiffany, about having dinner together. Mm -hmm. If we were looking for one habit that promotes a happy family and, and healthy children. It is having dinner together and having regular meals together. There's quite a bit of research on this that shows that the number of meals a family has together equates with a happy, healthy, functional mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. So not just dinner, why can't you have breakfast together? I know it's mm -hmm. a rush, but mm -hmm. why can't you take that extra 10 minutes, sit down together, or even occasionally go down to your kid's school and have lunch with them? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Those idea. are very important moments, so it, yeah. And that makes them feel do. special too, I think, yep. when you have lunch with them. And the statistics about um, one out of four teens feeling sad or hopeless, I think, in today's world is a good reason to, to, to maybe develop some of those positive habits and develop a time when you can meet as a family. Thanks both yeah. of you so much Thank you. for being here Thank today. You. We want to give information so that you can reach both of them. Barb's website is thepeoplepro.com. It's a great uh, website. She writes a newsletter on that website. And Jeff's website is for Pivotal Directions, and that is pivotaldirections.org. Great to have you again, guys. Thank you. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you.